Hi, uh, this is a patron-only podcast. It's Kirby. It is September 25th. And um, I am going to kind of summarize how the revelations that are coming out in the Sean Combs case can be, let's say, seen in a better light, perhaps, by looking at the allegations that Courtney Love had Kurt Cobain murdered. So all of us have heard about the Freemasons who have existed for centuries, who came over from England, settled into the United States. We know about all of these secret societies. We've heard about Bohemian Grove. It's a place where the most powerful men go once a year and where most of the major um, players are set into motion. So, for example, it is understood that during one of these meetings, Bill Clinton was given the green light and he was allowed to become the next president following a George H.W. Bush, who, as you know, was the director of the CIA. A lot of this stuff that I'm going to share with you does have connections to, let's say, uh, the three-letter agency. And really, not just in this country, there's something called Five Eyes. So all of the English-speaking countries are involved in this. But it, it it is part of, let's say, the way that we are, I'm going to use the term mind conditioned, um, culturally conditioned. And I, it's not the first time I say it. I've said it many times. You know, this is done through Hollywood, through the music industry. What What is being um, shown and what we can see with the recent allegations against Sean Combs and all of the deaths, people who die suspiciously because they're either poisoned, but the coroner rules it a sort of like, you know, somebody died of pneumonia or somebody falls out of a window. Well, we saw this during the early days of the Jeffrey Epstein, Glenn Maxwell case. So my point is that this is not new. We are beginning to see that the people who pull the strings, it's, a, it's again, multi-generational. So the name that has been coming up is somebody I've spoken about on this platform. It's Clive Davis. He is now 92 years old and he is alleged believed to have had a five-year relationship with Sean Combs beginning when he was 23, where, for lack of a better term, Combs was made to get on his knees, but in return, he got wealth, fame, riches, and he was made for a very long time too big to break, sort of like if the banks are too big to fail, this is what happened to Combs. Now with Clive Davis, it, it, it goes back a very long time. You will remember that I also discussed Janis Joplin on this platform. Janis Joplin was born on January 19, 1943. Uh, she was an American singer in 1967. Uh, she was part of a group called Big Brother and the Holding Company, and they appeared uh, at the Monterey Pop Festival. Well, who was sitting in the audience? Sh uh, I'm sorry, um, Clive Davis. And he discovered her. Well, three years later, she would die of, quote, an overdose. Well, I believe in the podcast that I have here, and you'll have to look for it. I'm sure I labeled it Janice Joplin. Um, 
the understanding uh, behind the scenes was that Davis had inserted an intelligence asset into her life. This guy was married. He was dating her. And they had the way they control a lot of these artists, as I have repeatedly stated, is through drugs. And that um, whatever drugs she was taking on a particular day, the the man posing as her boyfriend, because a lot of this stuff is fake relationships, you know, people who are your handlers are given different titles. Oh, he's my boyfriend. He is this, he is that. We saw it with Kanye West, now known as Yi. When we learned about Harvey or Harley Pasternak, who's his supposed to be his trainer, but in reality, he was his handler. So there are now it's coming to light that we have a lot of handlers. To get back to Janice Joplin, on October 4th, 1970, her handler connected to Clive Davis, connected to CIA, apparently gave her something that caused her to die. Okay, we can compare this to Whitney Houston, uh, you know, and what happened two days before the Grammys. And, you know, she arrived in Beverly Hills to take part in the annual pre-Grammy party that Clive Davis had. And then two days later, she's found upside down in the tub. And then there was this large party uh, just four floors, four floors down. She was on the fourth floor. Her body was left there. No one was allowed to come into the hotel once she died nobody was allowed to leave um but it is believed that davis uh had what is known as a sacrifice party we have talked about this again so that um these people somebody like let's say um clive davis somebody like harvey weinstein somebody like leslie wexner somebody like Leon Black. This goes back into history. Goes back into history. You know, I wrote a book, Chasing Chandler, where I talk about her, how her ancestors would go to Bohemian Grove and how they too were suspected of some high, uh, highly known suspicious murders that have never been solved never been solved so with Courtney Love and let's say with Sean Puffy Combs it appears to me because there are just too many similarities that you know when they are taken under the wing of one of these oh what do we call them I'm just going to say demon for now <laughs> because it's a lot of also satanic stuff that's coming to the surface that we can now see in the Sean Combs case that was not really that obvious to other people, to many people, when they were studying the Epstein case. So um, I believe that I have shared with you that Nicholas Jarecki, the son of Henry Jarecki, all of whom are in the Epstein nexus um, dated Courtney Love for a couple of years. Now, I had a picture of them attending the 2016 pre-Grammy uh, party hosted by Clive Davis, where they were honoring a, a man by the name of Irving Azoff at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. And coincidentally, that's, of course, that's where they have it every year. And that is where Whitney Houston was, I'm going to call it sacrificed. Um, this guy is another very big name. Um, he was born in December, let's see, let's see December 12th, 1947. This guy is also uh, connected to Sean Combs, but you don't hear about him. This is the kind of name that um, some people know about, other people don't know about. This guy goes back to 
um, things having to do with Ronald Reagan, uh, to the music industry. Um, basically, it just, I'm just going to fast forward. Since 2013, he's been the chairman and CEO of Azov MSG Entertainment, which is a venture, a venture with Madison, Madison Square Garden. Um, prior to which he was, and this is important, he was the chairman and CEO of Ticketmaster and executive chairman of Live Nation Entertainment. And he sits on the boards of STARS and IMG. Now, all of these are very important uh, companies that are all interconnected. Um, so Jarecki and Courtney Love attend this pre-gala party, the, the pre-Grammy party in 2016. Um, and at this point, they're a couple. Uh, many people have heard the allegations that Courtney Love had Kurt Cobain murdered. I, I'm not the first person to tell you this. My point is that they seem to have learned how to kill and get away with it. Um, and they get away with it because, as I point out in my book, um, Chasing Chandler, that goes back in history because they created Los Angeles. They created Hollywood, the Hollywood that we know today, right? There was blackmail at that time. There was murder at that time. And there were satanic sacrifices at that time. So what we're seeing is just a continuation of what began a long time ago, long before any of us were ever born. And part of that means that the police departments are in the pockets of those who pay them, of those who pay them. So um, if you remember, Cobain was the lead singer of Nirvana and he was found dead in his Seattle home on April 8th. 1994. Now, the newspapers reported that he was high on heroin and Valium uh, when he shot himself. And people have uh, done the math and they, they have speculated that it just doesn't seem reasonable based on a number of factors that he could not have then uh, shot himself after something, you know, so that it had also been reported that Love had offered a local guy uh, whose name was El Duce, $50,000 to murder him. However, this man, after he spoke publicly and he was caught on tape talking about what the plan had been, he too suddenly was no longer breathing. Um, the FBI files, which were not so long ago released, uh, show that they refused to look into Cobain's possible murder despite the multiple signs of foul play. So in this case, uh, he he was the star, but Courtney Love is a multi-generational um, member of, um, we're going to have to call it, I'm going to call it the Illuminati. That's my term for it. Other people want to call it the elite, but these are people who are part of a, an ongoing tradition um, where they do feel that if not only do, do they want to, let's say, get rid of someone because of greed, okay? Because clearly in her case, he was going to divorce her she was not going to get the money that she felt was her due. Um, and so therefore she decided to do this. But it is also done as a human sacrifice. If you do this enough times, it is supposed to, um, this and something else that I'm working on, uh, which I will be talking about it at some future date. It is supposed to give you continued success, financial success in these industries. Um, 
an interesting thing that I had discovered while looking into Courtney Love is, um, and some of you who follow me on Substack probably saw it, she posed for a certain photograph and it showed her having two sexes. So it showed her being what was usually in days past called a hermaphrodite. And nobody has really talked about the fact that she is, it's now called intersex. Uh, so she has both sex, um, let's call them, gen she's of both genders. She was able to have a child. And that is what some of the people born in that fashion, but nobody has really discussed that. Um, we know that she was in Jeffrey Epstein's Black Book. We have seen photographs of Courtney Love meeting and partying with Prince Andrew. Um, her father, Hank Harrison, on his Facebook page, when it was still up, I don't know if it's still up, but a long, long time ago, basically said something to the effect that the crimes are 10 times worse, the crimes that Epstein committed against uh, his victims, that they were 10 times worse and 100 times more numerous and more degenerate than you can imagine. I think that you can now, while you're hearing what is alleged to have been happening with Sean Combs for so many decades that went unpunished, people are talking about the most grossest things, orgies for days, but you know, really bad stuff. And here we have Hank Harrison basically saying, yeah, the crimes are 10 times worse and 100 times more numerous and more degenerate than you can imagine. And so he goes on to add the New Mexico um, Zorro Ranch is bad, but when victims were worn out, they would simply be taken to the desert and buried or taken to sea, weighted down and dumped overboard. The ones who survived are lucky to be alive. And then he goes on to say, we are talking multiple slave murders here. Okay. So when I started talking many years ago about my experience, and those of you who know me know that I have a memoir, The Billionaire's Woman. Um, when I used many, many years ago, the term as slave, nobody really understood what I was, what I meant that term then became, it's mainstream now. People know that term. So in that manner, I, purse on a personal level, have a very big sense of relief. On another level, I am shocked at how widespread this has been. Uh, no one that is enjoying any level of fame hasn't paid a, a dear price, okay? Because there are, there again, there are levels. Somebody like Clive Davis, Leslie Wexner, Leon Black, Harvey Weinstein, they're on a higher tier than let's say Jeffrey Epstein or Sean Combs, although they're allowed to get away with a lot, but they're disposable. If they become too problematic or if they step on the toes of someone who belongs to a higher level, we can look at it as a pyramid. You know, everybody has their level. If they step on the toes of somebody on a higher level, which apparently Combs did, apparently Epstein did, then, you know, it's, jail time for them people are talking about the fact that oh well now maybe she, clive davis will go to jail oh maybe people like ashton kutcher will go to jail oh oh maybe j-lo will go to jail no uh these things are contained uh in the in the uh case that most of us heard about when Glenn was in trial. Um, that was 
a mock trial. A, a lot of things were not said. She wasn't charged with the things she could have been charged with. Um, the question, it, it was just a mock thing. And even though she's in jail, the public did not really get to understand what was going on. And so they keep it on a very superficial level. The interesting thing about what's happening with the Combs case is that with so many people talking now, and by the way, a lot of people who are talking are disinformation agents, right? People who are still on the, the side of Clive Davis trying to protect him and who in order to protect Clive Davis, they need to protect Sean Combs as well. So they are claiming, oh, well, the book that Sean Combs, the mother of his children who died of pneumonia, but she knew that he had poisoned her and left behind uh, a diary, which has recently been published. Um, they're pushing back. And apparently they have troll farms and they have just ways to say, well, no, this did not happen. This person is lying. So we can now see almost on the same scale of pushback that happened during the Epstein case that people were not, I think a lot of people, me included, we were not accustomed to seeing that kind of pushback. You know, why, you know, aren't we all on the same team? No, there are people and, and frankly, some are intelligence agencies who, who, you know, have a room where people are there creating uh, fake uh, social media accounts in order to push back and call this person a liar, that person a liar, and to disparage anyone who sheds light on what's really going on. Because again, this is not a new thing. This has been going on for hundreds of years and it's been refined into the Hollywood industry, into the music industry, even into the books that we read, the cartoons, Disneyland, so on and so forth. Um, so that what I really wanted to do was just give you that as something to think about, something to mull over. Um, there's also a lot of, when we're hearing th things about the uh, Combs situation, there's a lot of stuff that's being said by people who are not understanding what they're either reading. I can see that they have good intentions. However, you you have to almost read the documents yourself. You have to, if you really want to know what happened in the Epstein case, this is a very good window of opportunity for you to uh, see because it's all the same thing. It's all interconnected. It's all part of the same satanic uh, operation. We are hearing about uh, the, the fact that uh, Sean Combs was into voodoo or that Beyonce is considered to be, quote, a witch. Maybe they're using the wrong terminology. I don't know. But it's all connected to the occult. And there is an occult... Um, uh, like with Bohemian Grove, there's an occult um, basis for this, which can be go back to the Freemasons, you know, go back to Aleister Crowley. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, which includes cross-dressing, which includes, you know, the merging of the two male and female into one. So we have things like, Davis having a five-year relationship, a romantic relationship. You know what? I don't, I don't think romance had anything to do with it. I think it was just the bare naked S word with Sean Combs. He turns around, spends what, $5 million to create bad boy entertainment for him. He wouldn't do that with just any 23-year-old. He would have done that for for this kind of relationship and then what happens if you are used in that manner and some people remain victims we see that there are some people that are that are victims there are some people that 
then become the monster. We are seeing that as this plays out in, in full view, because more people are talking about this case than they were during the Epstein days, because during the Epstein days, not a lot was really clear to a lot of people. But we can see in this situation a little bit more, but you have to have, you have to be able to discern what's real and what's not. And the only way to do that is to read the documents, understand what's going on. Now, from where I sit, people are asking me, well, do you think there's going to be, quote, justice? Well, no. And, and they're thinking that perhaps the mayor of New York is going to be, um, you know, is going to have to step down. There are a lot of people, just like with the Epstein case, stepped down. Leslie Wexner stepped down. Leon Black stepped down. Glenn Dubin stepped down. We had all of that happen. We've had a lot of people step down. Will these people face the consequences? No, because our justice system is paid for. That is what the blackmail is used for. They are These people are put into positions of power. All right, guys, I'm curious to know what you have to say. I hope you are all well. Please remember to give this a like. Talk soon. Bye.